it's Jake with superbrewers.com here with uh, another update again I'm uh, drinking the extract stout I made a while ago um, same one goes great with ice cream hmm. it's not overly roasty it's got a, a nice um, could be a little more bitter but um, it's nice and smooth it's pretty sweet it doesn't give that same kind of ashtray character you can get sometimes with a, a stout with too much uh, roasted barley or black patent in it uh, but really easy drinking uh, it's going really well after um, playing on a, a new toy that my family got a couple weeks ago and we've really just started using it this week but I'll have some video of the slack line posted um, later on uh, so check that out if you're interested uh, I try to be pretty active so that way I can drink beer and not feel guilty about it a um, few extra calories most a, a decent beer doesn't have that many more calories than a regular soda uh, so I'd rather drink beer good stuff but what's going on recently um last week i brewed up this pale ale it's based on um vinnie's hot to it recipe that was in the uh zimmergy in 2013 i believe um i will make sure that i put the correct date and issue uh in the notes below so check that out and but it's basically, I had to do some tweaks um, based on what was in there. The recipe called for Maris Otter, I had Golden Promise. Um, that was really the only substitution that I had to make. And, um, but it's 75% give or take, um, just American two row. And then 13% Golden Promise. And then, uh, very small amount of acidulated malt and some caramel 20 and so that's in here this one is all brewers gold um this one was all uh, nugget and i'm doing that for uh, a guy that's i uh, got a hop farm hoppyfarm.com he's got great hops um right now all he has is brewer's gold nugget from last year uh it is july so one of the things i'm excited about is this saturday um these beers will be going down to his farm to be served um for a field day and hopefully they're completely done fermenting by then um it looks like this one's completely done this one uh, it's still bubbling a little bit. I'm going to have to warm that up a little bit to get it to finish out. So, um, relatively simple recipe. You'll notice drastically different volumes. These are both six and a half gallon carboys. Um, make sure you know the volume of your kettles because I have a suspicion. I haven't confirmed it yet, but... I think my new kettle that I thought was 15 is actually like 12 and a half. Just because I filled my old kettle up halfway, and I know that's 15 gallons, and I came out with 6 gallons at the end of the boil. My new kettle, I have 3, maybe? But, you know, that's one of the things if you're, uh, the more things that you can control, the better predictability, predictability you'll have in all your stuff. So, before I brew again, my goal is to make sure I know the volume of my new kettle, um, so I don't end up with this nice situation. It would even be better if they were both you know, five gallons instead of, I mean, I'd be happy with, 
have 10 gallons here just about, I bet. So, just be nice if it was more equal. Just because I really want to see what they're like. And these are the same hops that I did the just straight Golden Promise and Nugget and Brewer's Gold in it. And that was a fantastic combination. So I'm really excited about both of these beers to get to taste them and what they're like. Um, but this stout is also the same stout that I took to Josh Secor's uh, Battle Picnic last weekend. Um, if you haven't watched the Meeting of the Minds video, uh, he, Aaron, and I recorded a video that when Josh posted it, I don't recall all the details that happened. So it was a good thing he was kind of a, a built-in memory checker for me. So um, check that out. Uh, it's good stuff. And then the day after that, we went to the American Homebrewers Association rally at Surly Brewing Company in Minneapolis. Was it was good. The rally was interesting. They had raffles every hour. Uh, Got to meet a few home brewers. That was a lot of fun. Uh, got to drink Surly beer, which is always good. And um, at a really hop forward brewery like that, it's interesting. Um, people talk about single hop beers not being that interesting. And I would argue that to a point, but comparing um, Surly's Todd the Axeman to Hop Shifter, which is, they use the, the same, I'm guessing it's the same grist build that they probably even use for Todd the Axeman, but they just do single hops in it. And it was a, don't get me wrong, it was a good beer. Um, but it just didn't have a lot of depth of hop flavor and aroma and stuff, especially comparing it side by side that Todd the Axeman, which is awesome. Um, also certainly overrated. Not that overrated, in my opinion. But, um, so, let me grab the gift from Surly. They gave every home brewer that signed up five gallons of a uh, Lacto kettle soured um, uh, lacto kettle soured wort, and so um, brought a carboy, got five gallons of wort, and so why wouldn't you do that? I don't know, um, but so. I was thinking about doing an Abbey Ale yeast, but I get really uh, scared of too much Belgian flavor as far as clove phenols and stuff, and I wasn't sure that would go that well with a uh, soured, lacto kettle soured wort. So um, just pitched US05 once that's done. I have some ideas for some different fruits I might put in there. Um, big fan of like blackberries and nectarines and stuff, but, well, maybe together, maybe not. Anyway, there's that. And then the other reason that you should know what all your volumes are, I had four and a half gallons of wort left in my mash ton at the end of this, um, running off into my new kettle, completely filled it up so I couldn't literally couldn't put any more in there. So I set that aside and just did a 45 minute boil with um, some nugget and then I added some caliente I had left over from the single hop experiment and just did a 45 minute boil. By the time that was done, um, I was almost done cleaning up. So then I just chilled that put it in the fermenter, pitched US05, we'll see how that turns out. Um, what else is going on? Oh, slackline. It's, well, I'll post some of the footage of me because it's pretty comical. 
I can kind of walk. I can barely, let's be honest, I can barely stand on it, but it's challenging. Um, I love mountain biking, love snowboarding. I think slacklining is going to be right up there just because of the challenge. And all everything I've done that's balance related all ties together somehow. But um, if you're interested in that kind of stuff, I do more fitness posting on like Instagram and then on Facebook uh, if you search for intensity for life I do a little more fitness talk over there um, that's more just a workout log at this point but um, yeah if you're interested in that stuff Instagram Twitter Facebook is intensity for life everything else all my beer stuff super brewers Twitter Facebook, Instagram, YouTube, Super Brewers is me. Uh, so hit me up. Let me know if you have any questions. Um, I mean, I, I'm in decent shape, but the best thing about it lets me get out and do lots of fun stuff with my kids, which I love, especially the mountain biking and snowboarding. Good, good stuff. But anyway, I'm rambling, so I'm going to stop. So cheers. Grow up an adventure. Mm. And if you're on YouTube, stick around. This is where I'm going to put the slack line video in. Take 